In this video, I'll be briefing you on the must-have latest Skyrim mods for August 2024, carefully selected by category. First, let's dive into the gameplay-related mods, starting with the Busy Follower Framework. This mod enhances Skyrim's basic follower system and adds new features to make the in-game follower experience more immersive and intuitive. This mod adds various functionalities such as commanding followers to find potions or food, assigning homes, setting outfits, teaching spells and skills, and even gathering firewood. This mod not only applies to basic followers, but also includes animal followers, hirelings, guards, and adopted children. If you're interested, please check the link provided in the description. Next up is Ultra Shields. This mod adds a variety of large and small shields to Skyrim. It enhances the defensive efficiency of shields and increases resistance to all elements. Large shields boost defensive efficiency by 25% and increase all elemental resistances by 15%, while small shields, though lower in defense, boast a lighter weight. These effects can be added through optional files, and if you only want to apply the appearance of the shields, you can install just the main file. I think it would be really cool if animations for each shield were added. If you've always wanted large or small shields, this mod will be a great choice for you. Next up is the TK Dodge RE add-on. This mod provides additional features to the TK Dodge RE mod. Through the MCM, it allows you to change several settings, such as adjusting the dodge key, modifying stamina consumption, enabling dodging with the sprint key, and allowing attack cancellation only within the MCO recovery frames. Although the features are simple, many players use TK Dodge, so I wanted to introduce this mod to help you manage it more conveniently. In this segment, we'll be introducing some hidden gem mods. We'll cover about two of them, starting with Soulsy HUD. This mod is a fast and lightweight Soul-style hotkey HUD mod for Skyrim SE and AE. It allows you to manage your equipment by setting hotkeys for the right hand, left hand, shout, and consumable slots. You can switch entire equipment sets with a single key tap, aiming for quick and snappy interactions while supporting as many mods as possible. This mod can be configured using the game's existing menus and uses minimal papyrus scripts to operate MCM, keeping the user interface as streamlined as possible. Next up is the Andrealphus Soul Gem Overhaul. This mod completely revamps the Soul Gem and Soul Trap system. In particular, this mod allows you to choose which grade of Soul Gem to charge when you cast Soul Trap on an enemy and defeat them. Previously, players didn't have this option, but now you can charge the Soul Gem of your choice. Additionally, Black Soul Gems can hold lower level Black Souls, depending on the size of the soul and the grade of the soul in each gem is displayed. Moreover, this mod introduces the Soul Gem Charge and Soul Release spells. These spells allow you to charge Soul Gems with magic and release already filled souls to revert them back to empty Soul Gems. This addresses several issues with Soul Gems and Soul Trapping, making gameplay more balanced. There are many more features added beyond what is shown in the video, which you can check out through the description link. This time, let's start by introducing the Girl's Travel Outfit, a highly popular mod on Nexus recently. This mod adds a cute travel outfit for female characters. The outfit consists of four parts, a top, gloves, boots, and a choker, and it is classified as light armor. It supports both CBBE and 3BA body types, and a patch has been released to support the BHUNP body type as well. The outfit can be crafted at the Forge, and the light armor items can be upgraded. If you want to style your character as a cute traveler, give this outfit a try. Next up is the Garment of the Goliath. This outfit is inspired by the real Goliath beetle and adds a set of light armor with a luxurious and fantastical design in the Altmer style. The armor can be worn by both male and female characters, supporting both 3BA and BHUNP body types. Not only can the mesh be restructured in body slide, but the cloak and waist pouch accessories also feature physics effects for more realistic movement. 
The armor's subtle red sheen and white fabric cloak harmoniously blend to evoke the image of a dignified holy knight. If you like it, give it a try. Next up is the Savhar Life Hunter mod. This mod adds light armor and a one-handed sword, along with a small story and dungeon. The outfit is a black suit style with armor layered on top, offering various partitions including a helmet, mask, and hood. In addition to the outfit, it includes a one-handed sword. When wearing the enchanted boots and sneaking, the character becomes invisible, making it especially effective for assassins. You can find this outfit set in a chest piled up at Windhelm Stables through Evan's journal, which reveals the location of the armor, or you can craft it at the forge with the Daedric smithing perk. Next up is the Grave Message mod. This mod adds great swords, one-handed swords, and shields to Skyrim, featuring impressive lion decorations and rune engravings. You can craft these elven weapons at the forge. Next up is the Crude Glass Weapons mod. This mod adds three new weapons to Skyrim. A greatsword, a warhammer, and a great axe. These weapons feature custom handcrafted art and use SSE's multi-layer parallax shaders to create a transparent and refractive appearance. The mod offers 1K, 2K, and 4K texture options, and an optional leveled list edition. The weapon stats are nearly identical to the standard glass series weapons, but the crafting recipes differ reflecting the high value of the items. Next up is the DD Teemio Cloth. This mod adds high-quality outfits similar to those shown in the video. While it could work well as a vampire outfit, it also reminds me of the riding attire from Black Desert, making me consider whether to film it while riding a horse. The outfit is divided into three partitions and comes in various colors, allowing you to choose and wear the one you prefer. In this segment, we'll be introducing some early access mods. First up is the Inquisitor Remake. Similar to MCO, this mod features a combo system where magic is cast through synchronized upper and lower body movements. This mod completely overhauls Skyrim's magic system. Originally created by Adri, it is now being developed further by Shingda. Currently at version 0.7, I felt that the controls have improved significantly during my testing. The previously unnecessary action branches have been simplified, the DAR folder structure has been changed to OAR, and the number of animations has been reduced. Given that the creator has developed various magic mods, including the new staff school, I have high hopes that this will become an excellent remake mod. Next up is the For Honor in Skyrim, Varangian Guard moveset. This moveset is specifically designed for when you wield a one-handed axe and shield. It features the creator's signature smooth animations and seamless transitions between normal attacks and power attacks. When you press the left or right movement keys along with a normal attack, your character will move and attack in that direction. Additionally, if you move backward while attacking, you'll perform a special counterattack after blocking. Players who enjoy the For Honor and Skyrim series will find this addition a great enhancement. Next up is the Olgeard Saber moveset. This moveset is presumed to be used in the Witcher 3 game and adds attack motions that can be used when wielding a scimitar. It seems to capture the unique movements of curved swords quite well. The transitions between normal attacks and power attacks are smooth. Normal attacks are characterized by continuous forward swings while power attacks feature distinct moves with various spins and constantly changing directions. Lastly, let's quickly introduce a follower mod. First up is Neva. She is a follower with a high poly head model. Through faux mod, you can choose from three different hairstyles. You can find her in the Windhelm market. As a ranger class, she prefers ranged combat. So if you favor close quarters combat, she might be a good match for you. Next up is Shania. Shania is a high elf follower with long yellow hair and a high poly head. She can be found at the Bee and Barb in Riften, and her class is a mage. Additionally, there are Cold Sun's Recorder and Vilya Replacers, which change the appearance of the Recorder and Vilya followers, just like in the video. 
If you prefer Cold Sun style, you can enhance the appearance of your followers with these replacers. Thank you for watching today's video featuring the must-have new Skyrim mods for the first week of August 2024. If you found these mods exciting and helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, smash that like button, and enable notifications to stay updated with our latest uploads. Make sure to grab these fantastic mods to elevate your Skyrim gameplay to new heights. Stay tuned for more awesome content. And until next time, happy modding and happy adventuring.